What's up, Ozones? Welcome to the Ozone, or welcome to another audiobook. Now we are on to the scoop. Oh my gosh, this is the second story in Felix the Shark, which is the last book. This is technically the penultimate story. That's crazy. Uh, <laughs> there's been 36 stories made, in, uh, not including Stitch Ray Stingers, of course. But uh, this one is... I, I want to say it's like the weirdest one out of all of them. But not in like weird in a way you think. Like... I think you'll you'll see what I mean by the end of this, but this one, it, like, don't go into this with any expectations. It's going to surprise you in a weird way. <laughs> um, so, yeah, if you enjoy this audiobook, then make sure that you subscribe so that you see when I upload the last, aka You're the Band. I still need to finish the Fetch audiobooks as well, but I will do that uh, hopefully by May. Uh, that's the plan anyway. And then we'll be on to... Uh, Tales from the Pizza Plex when it comes out in, I think, July, August, maybe. I don't know. Um, but anyway, let's get straight into the scoop. I'm so excited for this one. Mandy Mason shifted in her school desk's chair as she tugged on a strand of her hair that loosened from her two sci-fi styled buns. She was in the midst of writing a serious fan fiction scene for the animatronic game series Five Nights at Freddy's. Yes, it's another one of these fourth wall breaking stories. <laughs> well, not necessarily because of uh, FNAF VR. It's like a VR game in the FNAF universe. Anyway, you get what I mean. She paused her pencil on her notebook, flicking her eyes toward Mr. Peterson as he got up from his desk to speak to a student. Yeah, she was supposed to be doing homework like the other students during study period, but this scene was literally flashing in front of her eyes, begging to be written. Her phone vibrated with a message, so she covertly slipped it from her skirt pocket and tucked the phone below the desktop to read the screen. OMG, did you read Freak Story's latest fic? So good, yours is better. Thanks, gotta go. This is Total Misfit and M Squared, by the way. Mandy, what are you working on? Mr. Peterson leaned over her. Mandy dropped her phone in her lap and crossed her chunky black boots. Um, English, sir. Let's have a look. He grabbed her notebook before she could stop him. Hmm. The animatronic looked dead, but in all reality, the bear watched and waited for the perfect opportunity to grab the little boy from across the room. Mandy smiled in discomfort as the other students in the room laughed. She cleared her throat as her cheeks heated. Just a creative writing prompt, Mr. Peterson. He furrowed his eyebrows and shook his head. Let's get to the real work now, Mandy. I'm sure Mrs. Gentry isn't assigning you an animatronic bear essay. More laughter erupted in the classroom. Right, Mandy murmured. Mr. Peterson closed the notebook and slipped it back on her desk as he walked away. Fan fiction. So original, just like her pink hair. That must be why she thinks up such great stories. Melissa Chandler whispered a little too loudly from the desk behind Mandy. Mandy gave a quiet sigh. Here we go again. It's like someone threw up diarrhea meds on her head. Lily Jansen giggled back. <laughs> uh, oh wait, is that what happened to you, Mandy? Mandy looked down at her notebook, rubbing the tip of her eraser across the cover. I died, but I dyed it because it looks better with my complexion. You should try it sometime. Right, like I need help with my complexion. Melissa leaned forward toward uh, Mandy's shoulder. You're a real freak show. You know that mace head. A freak with different coloured eyes. The girls both laughed. It was true. Mandy had been born with heterochromia. <laughs> That's a really cool word. With one brown iris and one green iris. Having two different eye colours really hadn't been an issue with other kids as she grew up until she met, uh, until she met Melissa. Then again, Melissa seemed to take issue with everything about Mandy. Mandy shrugged, even though she felt tension grip her body inch by inch. By now, she was an ace at not showing her emotions. It had taken some time and more than a few hurtful comments, though. I'll take that as a compliment. You would, Melissa said. Why are you such a freak? Lily wanted to know. Mandy forced a smile. Lucky, I guess. More like cursed, Melissa said. And the, bu and the girls both laughed. Yeah, 
podcast to deal with you for the past three years. Melissa is a lot like everyone else at Donovan Prep School for Girls. Smart and pampered, ex- except Melissa was over-the-top perfect and the richest girl in school. Her red hair was styled with blunt bangs, the straight edges of her hair brushing her shoulders. Her makeup was just the right shade for her pale skin tone, and her blue eyes were so razor sharp that she could pretty much rip a girl to shreds with a single look. Even worse, other mean girls like Lily orbited around her like she was some sort of evil star. As for Mandy, her parents did well enough financially to send her to Donovan Prep. Even though it wasn't her style, she wore the school's obligatory uniform, played skirt, white sh- shirts, cardigan, and knee-high socks, but she rebelled in her own way by dyeing her hair. This week it was cotton candy pink. If the Mean Girls were going to make a big deal that she was a little different, then she'd all go out. Uh, s- sorry, she'd go all out. <laughs> The DP rulebook never stated regulations on hair colour. Besides, it wasn't like she was a bad kid. She was a straight A student, but apparently she didn't have the right looks, eye colour included, to fit in. Mandy tried to remember how it all came to be that Melissa hated her. It had been three years of bullying and been unmean remarks. Had it been because she aced out Melissa on a test their freshman year? Or was it when she answered a question Melissa didn't know during history class. Whatever the case, Melissa had marked Mandy for life with a big fat bullseye. When the bell rang, Mandy grabbed her backpack and quickly made her way out of class to her locker, leaving behind the annoying giggles of Melissa and Lily. A pathway of students opened when she walked by as if she was some weird creature to avoid. No one wanted to risk the wrath of Melissa Chandler to befriend Mandy. Most days, Mandy felt like a human sacrifice offered up at the altar of Melissa's cruelty. The other girls knew she was Melissa's favourite target, and there was no way they wanted to take Mandy's place. Mandy couldn't really blame them. At her locker, Mandy pulled out her longboard, longboard, exchanged uh, books, and shut the metal door. A folded paper had slipped from her locker and dropped to the ground. She picked it up and opened the paper to see a printout of a skinny, odd-looking dog, with its tongue hanging out and its eyes bulging. One eye was coloured green, and the other brown. Pink buns were drawn over the ears, and Mace Head was printed in bold letters above the picture. Mandy crumbled the paper and grabbed her board, slipped her rainbow backpack to one shoulder, and headed down the hall toward the lobby of Donovan Prep. She tossed the crumbled picture in the garbage can on the way out. In the afternoon sun, she hooked her rainbow backpack onto both shoulders, dropped her board and rolled on the sidewalk toward home. She pulled a licorice from her backpack and chewed on it as she made a mental list of what she needed to do for the rest of the day. Finish government econ homework. Finish the latest fanfic story. Write a new entry on her blog, The M&M Scoop. That's right, guys. This story... Actually, never mind. (laughs) I won't say that because it's kind of a spoiler, but not a spoiler. Um, 20 minutes later, she walked through the front door of her home and closed it at her back, leaning against the door. All the window shades were closed, making the large house seem dark and isolated. She rolled her board into the front closet. Her mum hated when she left it out and dropped her backpack on the settee. Settee. <clears throat> she wandered into the kitchen and grabbed a bottled water and a fresh handful of licorice from the pantry. Luckily, her folks were cool like that and made sure she was always fully stocked. Her phone rang with a video call. When she answered, her mother's face flashed on the screen. Your hair is pink, Mum said instead of hello. Mandy smiled. You noticed. What was wrong with the black? At least it was some semblance of normal. Oh, you know, that was my emo phase, Mum. <laughs> her mum lifted her eyebrows. And what do you call this phase? She shrugged. Pastel? Mandy, how's work? Work was always the same with mum, busy, 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 but at least it got the focus off Mandy and her mum's subtle disapproval. Mum sighed. Busy as usual, I'll be home for the weekend, before my trip to Utah next week. Utah? (laughs) Mum worked as a managing rep for one of the biggest pharma... Sorry. Pharmaceutical... Uh, uh, yeah, pharmaceutical companies in the business. Her job was a constant tr- was constant travel, overseeing reps and taking a bunch of meetings all the time, where apparently large amounts of medicine were talked about. At least that was what Mandy knew about it. Mom often missed out on a lot of 
stuff at home, but mum and dad had always said their jobs were what provided their wonderful home, Mandy's schooling, and the lives they wanted. Okay, mum, sounds good. Mandy, please stop bouncing. You're giving me motion sickness. Sorry. Mandy stilled the best she could. Sometimes she couldn't help her urges to fidget or bounce. I talked to your father in between meetings. He wanted to tell you it looks like it will be another late one for him tonight. Mandy shrugged off the disappointment. That's okay. There's frozen meals in the fridge. I know. Mandy spun around on one foot. Don't just eat licorice for dinner. How's school? Mandy paused and crossed her ankles. Amazing, her mum said. Good. Oh, I, I gotta go, sweetie. I'll touch base with you tomorrow. Don't stay up too late. I won't, mum. Bye. In her room, Mandy twirled around in her desk chair, pushing one foot on the carpet as she spun in a circle with one licorice hanging out of her mouth. She had Mr. Happy, an old blue stuffed Mr. <laughs> Mr. Hippo. She had a Mr. Happy, an old blue stuffed elephant that used to be her brother's, clutched under her arm as she played FNAF 3 on her phone. <laughs> I love this story so much. It's so fourth wall breaking. <laughs> Mandy had always loved playing computer and mobile games. She could be anyone she wanted to be, go anywhere she pleased and solve problems in every way imaginable. Truthfully, gameplay had become her escape from all the drama at school and from her real life, where it often seemed like she had no control at all. One summer, she'd stumbled upon the FNAF community, yay! Die-hard gamers who loved the series for its scares, who played the games habitually, wrote the fanfiction, and theorised about the game lore. The online community loved trying to unravel hidden mysteries within the FNAF universe. I bet you can tell why this is a scrap story now. <laughs> Honestly, this, like, this is probably why this is a scrap story. She had to admit she was pretty new to the technical side of gaming. She didn't know all the coding stuff, but she was an excellent researcher. She had discovered an online decompiler that broke down the source code of certain games. At the moment, she was waiting on the decompiler to do just that for FNAF 3. She had watched a video game theorist <laughs> who'd found clues in other FNAF games' code. She thought this was a super cool idea, so she was trying it out for the first time on her own. Her laptop pinged and she stopped spinning in her chair. There was a notification about a new post to her favourite FNAF forum on Gamers Unite. Uh, I'm sorry, I had to cut, so we're back down here. <laughs> uh, when she saw it was posting about a mysterious missing kid, her excitement took a nosedive. Missing kids were a dime a dozen in FNAF, but since she was bored, she clicked on it anyway. The posting was about a five-year-old boy who had gone missing 17 years ago. Apparently there were conflicting details that a man in purple may have kidnapped him. Mandy made a face. A purple man? Like William Afton? <laughs> uh, right then, the decompiler notified her the file was complete. Eagerly, she clicked on it, the data it created for FNAF 3 and an explosion of images, textures and small files opened. Whoa! Mandy reached over and grabbed her framed photo of her brother that sat on her desk and put his tiny face to the screen. Look at this, Bobby! Pretty cool, huh? She set his photo back down and attempted to save the data. Dang it! The files for the game were too large to be saved on her laptop, so she started to go through the files online. <laughs> Relatable. She wasn't sure what she was looking for, but she'd know it when she found it. Probably. She bit down on a licorice and tugged off a mouthful as she checked out the content. The files were mostly images and sounds from the game. She yawned and took a sip of her water bottle. As she was skimming through the bulk of data, an image called lookshauntednow.jpg caught her interest. Lifting her eyebrows, she clicked on the image. A colourless photo of an old metal building opened up on the screen. What is this? she murmured. She's, she zoomed in to the photo the best she could before it became pixelated, looking for something to tell her of the location. The building was pretty run down. The door paint looked chipped, and there was a crack in one of the front windows. There was a street name too, Willow Something Road, she murmured. Why would this photo be in the files of FNAF 3? The point was, it shouldn't be. Mandy suddenly shook with the excitement in her desk chair, tapping the boots on, her on the carpet. 
she actually found something from the game that didn't belong. Something she hadn't seen online yet. Was this clue left by the creator? Was this building supposed to mean something to the game lore? People were going to freak. Immediately, she downloaded the photo and saved. She logged on to a FNAF forum and uploaded the picture. Subject. Hot FNAF 3 find. You guys will never guess what I found. Something new in the files of FNAF 3. Have you seen this before? What do you think this photo means? How do you think it's related to the game story? Give me all your ideas. Help. It's basically a Redditor. <laughs> now nah, Redditors are more toxic. Uh, Mandy was so excited. She once again reached for the old photo of her brother and ran her finger down the frame. I can't believe I actually found something. What do you think it means about the game? Where do you think the location is? Do you think it has something to do with the main storyline or maybe this is a teaser for something new? So many questions, you know. Stay here, she set Bo Bobby's picture down next to her. We have a lot of research to do. An hour later, Mandy yawned and stretched in her chair. She wrote a quick entry for her blog, then looked at the time. Yikes, it was later than she thought. She forgot to do her homework. Something red flashed in her peripheral vision by her bed, and she whipped her head around. What was that? She saw her full bed against the wall. Her game posters were pinned over it. Her tall dresser and polka dot bean bag were in their usual places by the door. It was as if she had spotted something move, and then it had disappeared into thin air. A chill swept over her, and she shivered. I'm just tired, she thought, and she'd spent the last five hours reviewing files from a horror game. Of course she was going to get spooked. Government econ homework was the perfect thing to give her some grounding, if it didn't put her to sleep first. Until tomorrow, FNAF world, <laughs> she said, and closed her laptop. I love this story so much. It's great. Okay. M and M scoop entry number 216. Something beyond cool happened. I was going through the decompiled files of FNAF 3 and I found something I don't think belongs. It's a photo of an old mysterious building. I could only make out part of the street name in the old photo. So I'm going to have to do some serious research to find the actual location. I'm asking around for answers. I'll keep you posted on what I discover. I am so excited, Eminem. Mandy clambered downstairs the next morning for breakfast, yawning and, be and bleary-eyed. Following the smell of coffee and the toast her father actually liked burnt, she turned into the kitchen and spotted her dad in a dark blue suit and tie. He was reading the latest news on a tablet as he leaned against the kitchen island. His blonde hair seemed to shine under the kitchen lights, reminding her that under the pink hair, she had his same colouring. Good morning, Mandy Bear, he said, eyeing her. Late night. Mandy nodded and opened the fridge to grab the milk. She shuffled to the pantry and pulled out the chocolate puffs. Dad grabbed a bowl and spoon and set it down for her at the island counter. You and I are la are... Sorry. You and I are lucky your mother isn't here to see you. You'd get busted for staying up late, and I'd get busted for letting you. Mandy squinted at him. He was freshly shaved and showered. His hair was already blown dry and combed neatly. Most days he got up early and hit the treadmill, so she knew he'd probably already been up for two hours. You had to work late. How come you're not even tired? He smiled and winked. I was born to live on five hours of sleep, kiddo. How's that possible? She muttered pouring cereal in the milk. And why couldn't I get that gene? It's my personal superpower, her dad shrugged. So, tell me, how did mum like the pink? Manny became suddenly fascinated by her cereal. She loved it. Really? Mandy nodded as she wiped milk from her chin. Hmm. Dad eyed her in disbelief, but didn't prod the matter as he sipped from his cup. So dad, you're good at solving problems. That's what I do for a living. Why? Got a school project dilemma? Lay it on me, cupcake. Well, I, I, I was sort of investigating this game. I found a photo within the guts of the game that wasn't part of the actual game. What do you make of that? So, not schoolwork. Her dad took another sip. I don't know, Mandy. Sometimes I think programmers just leave junk in there, right? Things they don't use. Not everything in there is a clue waiting to be found. Mandy snapped awake. Yeah? Like, maybe someone didn't want it to be found? Dad looked suddenly hesitant. Why? This photo is not something illegal, is it? <laughs> no, Dad, sheesh. What kind of person do you think I am? His eyes widened. Do you really want me to answer that? Mandy smiled. Maybe not. I do have pink hair. 
So, nothing unique about the photo then. Nothing that I can tell. Just a random building that could be anywhere. Dad sipped his coffee. That's kind of what I was getting at. It's possible the building was used for the game in a way that you weren't aware of. Like inspiration. Inspiration, she murmured. In interesting. He set down his coffee mug and scooped up his briefcase. That's all of my brilliant ideas for today, kiddo. Have a great day at school. Don't get arrested. He pecked her cheek on the way out of the kitchen. I have a meeting schedule later than usual. It could run over. It's all right, Dad. Maybe I'll see you for dinner. She smiled again. Yeah, okay. They both knew that wasn't likely. Monday's school day seemed to go by in a blur. She found herself zoning out <laughs> during classes. She was tired, true, but she was more than just distracted. Uh, turning over the possible meanings of the mysterious building she'd discovered. She was dying to see if other fans had responded to her post. The idea that she could have found a piece of important game lore was so exciting. When the last bell rang, she sprang up and rushed to her locker. The faster she could get out of there, the quicker she could get home and back to the forums. She spun the locker combo and whipped open the small door. Something popped from the inside and wet goop flung out, splattering her face and chest. Fazgu? Mandy dropped her backpack and stood frozen in shock. A burst of applause sounded around her. Mandy wiped goop from her face, and her hands came away with green slime. She dripped glo uh, gobs of it to the floor and spit out the slime that had been flown into her mouth. The goop smelled like toothpaste mixed with shaving cream, but she couldn't be sure. She turned to hear girls clapping and laughing as embarrassment plummeted inside her. She had the urge to run. She wanted to scream at them all. Just leave me alone. But she could only stand there and be the freak show they believed her to be. Sure enough, when Mandy cleared her eyes, she saw Melissa standing at the centre of it all. Melissa was barely four foot ten and pretty much looked like a little evil doll as she cackled. No wonder Melissa and Lily had been strangely quiet during study period. No need to bash Mandy during class when they had this to look forward to. Melissa strolled up to Mandy, her red hair swaying side to side. Wow, what happened to you, Macehead? She clucked her tongue. You've created quite the mess. You're a real menace to DP, you know. When are you going to realise you don't belong here, freak? Mandy started to shake. A teacher walked out of the classroom and Melissa slipped away quickly. What happened here? Mrs Gentry asked in astonishment. She looked at Mandy and the mess on the floor. Who did this? Mandy wanted to point her finger right at Melissa and her gaggle of friends, but she was too upset, too unsteady. If she talked right at this moment, she might explode on everyone, just like the green slime from her locker. She had no proof it was Melissa and her friends anyway. Mandy merely shook her head. Come on, let's get you to the office and cleaned up. Move along, everyone. Get going, or it'll be my pleasure to start pulling people in for questioning. A few minutes later, Mandy had calmed down enough to talk to the secretary. No, she didn't want the office to call her parents. She told them her mum was out of town and her dad was on him. It was in important meetings and couldn't be bothered, which was true. No, she didn't want to know who had done this. She didn't know who had done this to her, which was sort of untrue. Uh, she washed off the best she could in the office bathroom. Her throat tightened when she realised the green wasn't coming off her face all the way. Her pink hair was now spotted with green. She just had to get out of there and get home. She stopped by her locker to salvage what she could. The janitor was there, mopping the floor, smearing green everywhere. This had better come off, he muttered to Mandy, like it was all her fault. Just get your stuff out, and I'll try and clean it the best I can, but no promises it will all come off. Mandy thought he muttered something about rich kids, but she wasn't sure. She threw away some papers into the garbage can the janitor had provided, as well as the weird tube contraction that shot green goop at her. That was when she realised her longboard was gone. She blew out a frustrated breath. She was barely keeping it together. She... But she would not break at school. She wouldn't give Missa the s M Missa? Melissa the satisfaction. She grabbed the rest of her stuff and placed it in a fresh garbage bag she'd gotten from the secretary. She stopped by the office to report her missing long build, then left to walk home. She ignored the weird looks she got from pedestrians. As she replayed the explosion of her locker over and over in her mind, she began walking faster. The pain and humiliation seemed to spread throughout her body like wildfire, and she ran as fast as she could to make it all go away. It was the fastest she could ever remember running in her life. At home, Mandy took a shower and att attempted to scrub all the green out of her hair and off her skin. 
The green dye eventually came off her skin, but it had stained her freshly dyed pink hair. As she stared into the mirror, her eyes burned, but she blinked the sensation away. Fine, I'll just go purple tonight before bed. I love purple. Everything will be fine. <laughs> this is actually a story about, like, someone who dyes their hair purple and then they start killing kids. Like, <laughs> like they've been possessed by the purple dye. Um, she turned away, gathered up her stained uniform and threw it in a garbage bag. She washed the stickiness off her boots. There was no cleaning the backpack though. And she wasn't about to explain this incident to her parents. she just have to deal with the green splattered rainbow backpack for the rest of the school year. When she was done cleaning up, she sat at her computer and looked at Bobby's picture. It was a bad day, Bobby. She took a big breath to keep the sadness at bay. I, I don't know what to do. If I tell dad what happened... He'll tell mom, and then mom will fly back, and it will just be an even bigger mess. I just wish you were here with me. Sometimes I feel like you're the only one who I can really talk to. Mandy picked up the picture again. Her brother smiled up at her, just three weeks old, in blue footy pyjamas. Usually, talking to Bobby made her feel better, but there was an emptiness in her tonight that threatened to swallow her whole. Shaking her head, she logged in to the FNAF forums. She was ready to dive back into the comfort of her favourite world and forget everything and everyone from today. She didn't care about anyone at DP. The forums were where her people were, right? Subject. Hot FNAF 3 find. No way this is real. I decompiled the game before and I never saw this. Cool, I'll have to check this out. Great find. An old building. Wow. Big deal. Thumbs down. I tried to find it and couldn't. You sure you got this from FNAF 3? Yeah, me too. Couldn't find it. Mandy frowned at the comments she received from her post the night before. It had 43 downvotes. On this... Uh, sorry. Oh, this day just keeps getting better and better. What do they mean they couldn't find it? Mandy wondered. The photo had been in the de decompiled files of FNAF 3. It didn't belong to the game and anyone obsessed with FNAF knew that. Her phone rang for a video chat request from Lindy. Lindy, aka Total Misfit, was a friend she met online the past year. They kept running into each other in the FNAF forums and fanfiction site. Soon they started messaging each other and then they recently started video chatting. The only problem was that they lived two states away from each other and had never met in person. And with the distance, they probably wouldn't meet anytime soon. Oh, and Mandy learned right away that, at least with Mandy, Lindy was not a, mo a Total Misfit at all. She was also the kindest person Mandy had met in a long time. When Mandy answered, Lindy's full uh, circular glasses filled the screen. She had rich brown skin with black hair and brown eyes. Her purple frames were always falling down her nose. And, uh, oh, sorry. And Mandy continually watched her push them back up with her finger. Hi, Mandy. What you doing? <laughs> I can't believe I gave her that voice. Trying to figure out why no one can find that photo I posted from FNAF 3. Lindy sipped from her soda can. That was such a cool find. Mandy's eyes widened. Did you find it too? Lindy shook her head. Haven't tried. I've been swamped with the homework this week. Well, I'm decompiling the game again to see what happened. It was the only thing that looked out of place in the files. I can't believe people think I'm making this up. They're all just jealous you found it, and they didn't. That, or there's a glitch somewhere. I wouldn't worry about it. Besides, shouldn't we all be focusing on what the photo is instead of where it came from? Oh, by the way, you should try a reverse image search when you have a sec. Maybe you can find out where the photo originated from. I'll send you the link on how to do it. Mandy felt a bubble of excitement. Really? Cool, thanks. Sure. Lindy squinted. Did you dye your hair pink and green? Mandy ran a hand through her damp hair. Not exactly. Oh, okay. Something like a science experiment gone wrong, right? Mandy smiled. Lindy had this way of making light of things. And Mandy appreciated that. Pretty much. Hate when that happens. So, you up for a game of 20 questions? Lindy asked. I got some time. 20 questions had been their way of getting to know each other better over the last few months. You go first. Okay. What's your favourite ice cream? Easy. Fudge brownie is king. What's yours? Mint choc chip. Non-dairy. I'm lactose intolerant. Mandy made an O oh shape with her mouth and nodded. Do you have your driver's licence? Yeah. My dad made me get it right away. He said we all needed to know how to be independent. Don't you have yours? Mandy shook her head. Not yet. I just had my permit. 
My mum keeps bugging me, but I freak out every time I'm on the road, which hasn't been a lot lately. It's on my to-do list. Do you have any siblings? Two. Two? Wow. Yeah, I'm the middle child. According to my psychology class, I have a need for attention. Lindy shrugged and pushed her glasses up her nose. Not so sure about that. You have any siblings? Um, well, not anymore. Oh, Min Lindy's eyes widened behind her lenses. I'm so sorry, what happened? Is it okay to ask? I mean, I don't want to be... No, it's okay. My brother died when he was a baby and I never got to meet him. They're not really sure why he died. Sometimes babies just don't make it, I guess. Lindy nodded. I'm so sorry. I can't imagine not having my brothers around me, even if they are completely annoying. What are their names? James and Thomas. What was your brother's name? Bobby. She switched the phone over to her desk, showing Lindy the photo of Bobby. This is him. Totally cute in baby blue pyjamas. Thanks. Mandy walked out of her room, twirling a lock of hair around her finger as she strolled downstairs to the kitchen to grab a water. What's it like to have brothers anyway? Lindy pursed her lips and looked upward as if she was thinking about it. Well, they're loud and smelly and mine like to wrestle. Sometimes they steal your fries and definitely invade your privacy. One time, my older brother stole my diary and read it out loud to the whole family. I got him called I got him back by calling a girl he liked, but was too scared to call. He wouldn't talk to me for a week, but he got over it. To Mandy that all sounded wonderful. She often dreamed of growing up with Bobby as a big brother. How they'd always be together, playing games, hanging out. Maybe they would even get on each other's nerves. Her heart gave a little clench every time she thought about it and knew it would never happen. But other times, they can stick up for you when your parents get on your case or when you need some cheering up. And one of them is always around. I'm never by myself, which, is, which can also be super annoying. Family is family, though. Family is family, Mandy thought. From the fridge, she grabbed a bottle then walked to the living room and plopped on the couch. Oh, hey, I gotta go. Mum's calling me. I'll message you later. Coming, Mum. Okay. Lindy was suddenly gone. Mandy set her phone in her lap as she sat in the middle of her large, empty living room, completely alone. She started to stare into space, imagining Bobby still alive and grown just like her. He'd have dark hair like Mum, and he'd have been tall and slim like Dad. Maybe he'd crack jokes and maybe he'd be into video games or some kind of star athlete. Something flickered at the top of the staircase, catching Mandy's attention. A small blue shoe was on the top step. Mandy sat up quickly on the couch and watched it shift out of view. One second it was there, and by two seconds it was gone. Mandy got up and moved slowly to the hall closet, where her dad kept a baseball bat. After grabbing the bat, she crept up the stairs, gripping the railing hard with her free hand. She looked down the hallway, then searched each room and bathroom, trying to understand what she had seen. When she had looked everywhere uh, she could and didn't find suspicious little blue shoes or the person wearing them, she just shook her head.